Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you a general season review of CW's The 100, Season 1. And, uh, yeah, so let's get into it, man. Um, if you guys didn't notice, you know, I did, I have been putting, like, uh, some characters from The 100 and certain uh, tributes I've been making. And, uh, you know, I've just been, I just finished Season 1, obviously, and, uh, I'm pretty much sold on the show at this point. It's definitely one of my, uh, favorites uh, still airing at this point and I really enjoyed the first season and uh, I definitely plan I, I self watched season two of course but I have my way to see that right now so of course I'll, I'll do a video on that once I do finish that as well down the road and uh, I'll probably be caught up for season three which I think is happening next year um, so when that does happen too I will be doing weekly reviews so, uh, you yeah, have a lot to look forward to. But, uh, if you guys don't know what the 100 is, uh, well, I have the DVD right here, which I showed in a previous video. Thank you again, Movie Pilot. But, uh, yeah, so I think I can kind of tell you the general story of it without reading off of the description on the box. Uh, so it's about 97 years or so after the, after a nuclear disaster or, like, a nuclear war type of thing that occurred on Earth, and after that, apparently, the planet had become, you know, inhab inhabitable. What, what's the word for it? <laughs> I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Okay, yeah. Okay, after that, you know, the planet became uninhabitable, you know, because of all the radiation, you know, it was, like, in the air, and, you know, there's just, like, very, very lethal amounts of it. And so, uh, supposedly all the human survivors, you know, went onto the spaceship and, you know, they've been on there for almost 100 years now, as I said, but, uh, and the society they have on there is, like, really strict, it's really, uh, you know, just, it, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing a poor job of describing the show right now, but, uh. Like, you could be, uh, you could do, like, a really, you could commit, like, a really petty crime, and you could get punished by death, and, uh, or you could commit murder, and you'd be punished by death, you know, so there's not really much of a line here, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, because of that, you know, like I said, they're executed, you know, put to death, and how they do that is pretty, uh, pretty cruel, too. You know, they basically float people who commit crimes in their society, and how they do that, and uh, what floating means, I should say, is that they basically uh, shoot them out into space, and you know, with uh, everything out there, your head supposedly uh, like explodes and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely pretty brutal. And the main character, um, her name is Clark Griffin, and she's played by Eliza Taylor. You know, she does a great job, by the way. And uh, you know, so she's on that ship. It's called the Ark. You know, it's in space, uh, as I said. <laughs> and, uh, you know, her father is one of the engineers, you know, keeping the thing running. And he discovers that the ship only has about three or four months left of oxygen before, you know, it completely shuts down and they'd all eventually die. And, you know, of course, they have this, like, council on the ship, you know, like a form of government that they wanted to maintain. And, you know, they were against him, you know, like, tell her father, like, telling everyone, you know, because you know, they didn't want to like, cause a potential panic and things like that. But her father was, you know, very, uh, very much wanting to tell people the truth, you know, just to, so everyone could know without, you know, not like hiding something like that, you know, give them the proper time they would need to, you know, say goodbye or even make them aware so they can potentially help out with trying to, you know, get to Earth again. And so with uh, knowing that, though, um, you know, once he tries to do it, he is executed. We see that in flashbacks. And I really like the guy who did play uh, Clark's father. Um, I forget his name at the moment, but I think he did a pretty good job. And, uh, you know, so a, a little while after that, you know, uh, the council decides to send 100, uh, or uh, the 100 uh, juvenile delinquents, delinquents, you know, who have uh, committed some form of crime. You know, it can be uh, anything from as little as, like, theft you know, to murder. <laughs> so you have a lot of, uh, you know, different types of, not, you know, kids, teenagers mixed in there. 
So it's probably a bad idea to throw us the other one, you think. But they send uh, the 100 juvenile delinquents down to Earth to see if it's survivable at this point. Because that's really the only chance they have, otherwise they're all going to die. But, uh, again, this is what happens when you have Facebook open when you're recording a video. Hmm. Alright, anyway. So, you know, that's kind of the basic setup for the show. And, like I said, uh, Clark, she's the main character. And, you know, at first, uh, at first, <laughs> at first, she seems like your kind of stereotypical, you know, female lead. But I actually think she turns into a pretty well done character in the first season itself. Um, you know, she. She's not weak, she's not a damsel in distress or anything like that, you know, she's not all about being wrapped up in a love triangle. And while that does eventually become a part of it, you know, she's very much capable on her own, and, you know, like, kind of right from the get-go, you know, she kind of takes on, like, a leadership role among the people she is sent down to Earth with. So I really like her, I think she really works as the lead on the show. And, you know, with uh, what happened to her father, you know, she has, like, this uh, really uh, big uh, emotional weight to her, too, you know, so she's not, like, a flawless character by any means when she gets to the ground you know she's very much damaged and you know also we eventually find out that her mother who is one of the other central char characters on the show you know actually had a hand in uh, you know reporting her father to the council so <laughs> that's going to spark some things as you can imagine and then the other uh, who I consider to be the other kind of central character on the show would have to be uh, Bellamy. Bellamy, Be Bellamy Blake, uh, played by Bob Morley. And uh, he's definitely one of the most interesting, probably the most uh, comp somewhat kind of the most complex character on the show. And, you know, his story, you know, starts off, you know, he actually is the one that uh, tries to assassinate uh, Chancellor Jaha. And, you know, he shoots him, and then we eventually find out why he did that, though. Um, you know, he's told by another member on the guard that they had on that ship, you know, that... He, uh, okay, so... Bellamy has a sister named Octavia, and, you know, because of, you know, the rations, because of the lack of, you know, the shortage of food that they'd have on that ship, um, you know, they're told, you know, everyone's told they can only have so many kids and things like that. And uh, so they weren't supposed to have Octavia, you know, Bellamy's mother, so they had to hide her for years as she was growing up, you know, like hide her from inspections when, you know, guys would come around and look around. And, you know, so she grew up in a pretty isolated life, too, even more so than everyone else. And, uh, you know, when she's going to be put on the ship, you know, sent down to Earth, you know, Bellamy is supposed to be a little bit older than some of the other characters that are sent down there. Um, you know, we're supposed to think of, like, characters like Clark and, uh, Octavia as like around like 17, 18, 19 or so and uh, Bellamy I would assume is kind of in his 20s somewhere you know like early mid 20s around there somewhere so he's on guard duty and he was told that he could get a spot on the ship you know, and be sent down there with his sister so he could protect her if he tried to assassinate the counselor the chancellor I mean so he does that you know and uh, he can kind of understand it though but, you know, then there's that fear, oh, if they do come to the ground, what are they going to do to me? And that eventually develops into a really good uh, episode, which I'll get to in a few minutes. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to explain every single character on the show, though. But, uh, you know, it's well, The 100 is a great show because, you know, it has these characters on the ground, and, you know, you get to see, like, this whole survival type of thing going on. You get to see... Uh, I don't really want to compare it to The Walking Dead, but, you know, on The Walking Dead, a lot of it is about, you know, these people colliding with each other over what to do and how to survive and how you should act in this situation, what would be best, you know, based on what the world has turned into at this point. And you have a lot of questions like that come up on The 100 as well. So that's always really interesting to me. And at the same time, while the main focus is on the ground with these, uh, teens and, you know, like, uh, adolescents or, you know, just, uh, some of them are in their 20s, like I said. Um, well, if concentration is on them for the most part, you know, we also get a lot of scenes back and forth on the arc, too. We see, like, a lot of politics going on with that, you know, the 
Ch Chancellor actually surviving that assassination attempt, and he turns into I think he turns into a pretty well like you know well uh, liked character. You know he you know is uh, basically what any leader would be when he's struggling what to do for his people, and uh, even one of the top advisors to him is uh, Marcus Cain, and he comes off like a, just the dude who's just gonna you know try to you know knock uh, the chancellor off his throne and take it for himself it feels like the guy that's gonna backstab him at some point and just you know try to take over he comes off like that a lot at first but then he actually develops into yeah, actually a somewhat likable character and you know a little more interesting than you'd originally think and uh, of course like Abby's on there you know Clark's mother and you know she's like well, you know it's half like medical person on the ship that's left and like uh, Chancellor Jaha has to make some difficult decisions as the season goes on, you know, as they're trying to figure out a way to get to the ground with the kids. Once they s eventually see that they're, you know, somewhat for the most part surviving, um, you know, because apparently there are drop ships they can use and things like that. But even if they use all of them, there'd still be like a thousand or so people that wouldn't be able to get on. So he has to really make some difficult decisions with that, which I found to be pretty interesting. And um, let's see. Also, I really wanted to talk about the setting of the show, too. Like, the setting, uh, well, of course, the setting is Earth, you know, but the set and the visuals on this are very, very good, too. Um, I'm, I'm a guy that really likes the outdoor type of shows and movies. You know, I just like the whole outdoor, uh, just the appeal of that. You know, I just think that it's just really cool to me, you know? I think it's a good setting to have, and so to have, like, almost the entire show outdoors and, like, it's never-ending wilderness type of area. You know, it's just something very, very cool to me. And the set they use looks really good, too. You know, it looks like they're shooting on location somewhere. It looks so real. So I really like that. And, uh, let's see. See, I was starting the video trying to explain every single character that they ever focus on, but that I just realized that wasn't going to work. Uh, but yeah, as they're on the planet for so long, you know, of course they see like mutated creatures and things like that, like deers with two heads, eventually like horses with uh, one head and like a face on that head and things like that. Um, we haven't seen anything like overly uh, ferocious, ferocious. We haven't seen anything overly ferocious or vicious yet, you know, like a wild, you know, bear or something like that. That's gonna, you know, pick off the group. But I'm sure that could happen at some point. I don't know. <laughs> But, you know, so, let's see. Hmm. See, I'm just trying to figure out if I want to talk more about the story and try to, you know, butcher that a little bit more, <laughs> or what exactly I want to do here. Um, yeah, I guess I could uh, talk about my favorite episodes from the season. But I thought the pilot was actually pretty good. Um, but my favorite episodes in the season had to be episode 4, episode... Uh, eight episode nine and probably like the two final episodes um, episode four was called Murphy's Law and uh, Murphy is uh, one of the characters that like a Bellamy eventually becomes you know he's kind of like the leader for the people on the ground you know for the kids and teenagers that are brought there and uh, Murphy's trying to you know uh, rule with him and things like that. Of course, Murphy's something one of those guys that could backstab you at any second. He's a lot more violent, a lot more arrogant, and things like that. And he eventually, you know, tries to you know push Bellamy out of power. And uh, you know, after he's uh, almost hung and things like that. Um, and then there's this uh, little girl who ends up uh, killing the Chancellor's son, who is sent down there. And, uh, you know, because uh, she, you know, a lot of people hold a lot against the Chancellor on the show because, you know, they see him as fully responsible for people that, you know, for their loved ones that were killed and things like that. And she had a relative that, you know, that had occurred with. And uh, episode four is also one of the first, uh, one of the times when we really see another side to the Bellamy character, too. Because we see that he cares for this little girl and, you know, it kind of brings out, like, another side of him, you know, he tells her you have to slay her demons and things like that, which, which were really good scenes, and, uh, you know, the little girl ends up completely blaming herself as Murphy and, you know, some of his men are chasing after her, and she actually ends up committing suicide, you know, jumping off a cliff, you know, which is uh, pretty uh, dark to see, you know, 
Um, I don't know how many shows on regular TV you can say that, you know, have a girl, little girl jumping off a cliff or have a little girl exploding in the same season. So, you know, it's a little bit darker than people actually give it, you know, people actually realize, I think, in certain parts. You know, it's a little bit more serious than people would initially think. And I just love the reaction on Bellamy from that. You know, he just completely just snaps and he just tackles Murphy to the ground, you know, and almost like a beats him to a pulp before Clark and, you know, Finn stop him and stuff like that. And uh, Finn is sort of like the love interest for Clark on the show, at least for the first season and going to the second. Um, you know, he's one of the more level-headed characters. Um, you know, he's more, he, you know, he's for peace before anything else, you know, he doesn't really want to come to, like, fighting or anything like that. But at the same time, he, like I say, he's one of the more, e you know, uh, even-minded people, you know, <clears throat> and also there are these other people that are actually on Earth already by the time they get there. They're called grounders, and you know, they're, they're kind of like savage. Not like, exactly like cavemen, but you know, they use like a lot of primitive things. You know, like they have they crafted spears and you know, like uh, create traps and things like that. And so there's a it's a big question of you know how they're still down there. You know, how did they survive the Earth like that? And you know, so. We don't even have all those questions answered by the end of the first season, so there's going to be a lot to get, so they still could get into into season two, once we find out more about that group. But yeah, so they become like a big uh, threat as the season goes on, and Octavia sort of like eventually ends up seeing another side to this one, uh, you know, named Lincoln, you know, he's able to communicate with her, but you know, like I said, I'm not going to be able to tell you about every part of this show, you know, it's just, it'd just be way too much to go over, as it would be for any every show I uh, do a general review on. But yeah, Murphy's Law was a great one. Um, and all the episodes were good, you know, but, you know, as I told you before, my other general reviews of shows, you know, that these are just the ones that really stood out to me. And then episode 8 was another favorite of mine, Day Trip. Um, it just really, really fleshed out uh, Clark, but also mainly and especially Bellamy again. Um, like I said, he's probably almost well developed by the end of the season. And, uh, I guess, I, like I, well, I didn't say it yet, but the description says, while some of the hundred accidentally eat hallucinogenic nuts, you know, it actually ends up, you know, causing people to have these visions and things like that. It sounds ridiculous, you know, kind of silly, but it's actually, it actually ends up being really, really well done. It actually brings out some good psychological elements, too. You know, like Bellamy seeing the Chancellor and his fears what could happen if he comes down there. And then, you know, of course, uh, it causes Clark to see her father. And this is all well. Uh, you know, Clark uh, is being, you know, shown how to use a gun, you know, like gun training from Bellamy and stuff. And the first time Clark fires a gun is pretty awesome. You know, she shoots it and she's like, that was amazing. And, okay. But anyway. Um, and at the same time, uh, there's someone that was uh, sent, at, you know, to kill Bellamy, and you know this guy is like one of the murderers that were sent on the ship too, and you know of course it's a bad time for Bellamy to have to contend with that because yes he's a good you know physical guy but you know then he's you know seeing things left and right you know, and uh, you know Clark actually has to stand off with the guy you know aiming guns at each other but ends up coming down to like Bellamy shoving like a bullet into the guy's neck, which is pretty brutal and awesome. And uh, we just get, like, a great scene between Bellamy and Clark at the end. You know, Bellamy saying all he does is hurt people and his mother wanted him to be good. And, you know, saying he's a monster. Then Clark sort of, like, pulls him out of that by saying, you know, you know he had saved her life that day. And no, none of them would have survived if it wasn't for Bellamy, you know, like, like taking that leadership role when they first got to the ground. And uh, it really ends on a great note, you know, of them finally getting communication, you know, to the Ark and things like that. Um, you know, and Clark is actually able to convince uh, Jaha that, you know, what Bellamy has done for them since you know, the assassination attempt, you know, outweighs what he had previously done on that ship. And he's, like, a very vital part of the group. And it's still going to be interesting to see once the adults get down there and things like that, too. And Unity Day was a great one as well. At least that's the episode where we see a little girl explode. And again, that's more of the politics on the arc and things like that. That's all. It was all really intense, though, and you know, seeing, uh, you know, you actually see like uh, Clark thinking her mother's coming down, but that's actually the people 
like the people that were against the chance they're trying to come down there but it looks like their ship exploded and Clark think it, thinks her uh, mother was in it so it was a decent like uh, cliffhanger and things like that and uh, yeah the rest of the season is great too we see another character coming down to earth like early in the season you know her name is Raven you know she is uh, you know she's like a really good engineer and mechanic and things like that and she's also the girlfriend of Finn and uh, you know Finn and Clark had definitely taken an interest in each other if you get what I mean so it creates like this love triangle but it's not like overdone or anything like that it's not like thrown in your face or like shoved down your throat or anything like that and Raven's a very likable character too but she you know picks up on pretty quickly there's a con uh, connection between Clark and Finn and eventually you know they kinda go their separate ways and uh, there's even this scene of uh, Bellamy and Raven you know, they end up having sex and you know Bellamy asked her if it really helped anything and obviously it didn't but See, I could, there's just way too much I can talk about right now. And uh, uh, Raven is left in a pretty uh, compromising position at the end of the season, too. But And also, uh, oh yeah, um, the actress who played uh, Surin on Being Human Season 2 also has a role in the show. She turns out to be one of the leaders of the Grounders, at least for that section of where they, or where they live. And she does a great job. And, uh, you know, so I'm hoping she's still alive at the end of season one, so I'm hoping she's at least in some of season two, but, you know, I'm kind of getting uh, paranoid about that. And, yeah, the rest of the final part of season one itself, though, uh, We Are Grounders Part One, we, we Are Grounders Part Two, were just really, really intense, like, great uh, season closers for any show, let alone a debut season. It's really impressive that they did all this in one season. And the battles in this are actually really good too. Yes, it's a CW show, so people are going to make like the you know these weird assumptions and you know these uh, generic stereotypes. Oh yeah, it's all about teen romance and doesn't have any other type of substance to it, or you know not very much violence and things like that. But there are spears going through chests. Okay, there's like this saw thing that's you know like literally thrown into this guy's face in one of the last episodes. So you know. People really give the CW too much crap, I think. When they want to do violence, they can do a little bit. So don't, you know, don't really make any, uh, you know, assumptions about it. Um, and just the battle was really intense in the final two parts of the season. Um, just some really uh, well shot stuff, I think. You know, it made it feel like very, very realistic and believable as much as they could have anyway. And the season ends with a pretty big cliffhanger, you know, they all... You know, they all end up going to this little main uh, ship, and then they end up like, uh, you know, going, you know, going off the rocket thing, you know, which would like almost like uh, obliterated all the grounders that were on there. And uh, you know, like characters like Bellamy, you know, we don't know where he is at this point because he was left outside. You know, Clark, you know, probably assumes he's dead. And then these uh, like special ops-looking people that like, come down at the end, and you know, they're called Mountain Men, as uh, else call her Surin, but Anya, I think her name is on the show but they're called mountain men apparently, but they look like special forces people, so I'm wondering if they're like tied to actual gover actu the actual government from their old world or what. But uh, like I said, I haven't watched season two yet, so I don't know, and Clark wakes up in this facility, and yeah, so this is a very cool uh, cliffhanger for the season as well. And uh, Raven is bleeding out, and she was unconscious the last time we seen her, so I don't know what's going on with her either. And, uh, Thankfully, like, uh, Clark's mother and Kane are sent down there after the Chancellor decides to, you know, sort of, like, go down to the ship in a certain fashion. And, but I think, I'm kind of hoping he still comes down to Earth somehow, because it would be interesting to see, like, him actually being down there with Bellamy and things like that. But we'll see where it goes. Um, yeah, there are things I definitely didn't talk about from this season. They like said there's just, there would be, like, way too much to cover. So, you know, if there's something I didn't mention that you really want, to talk about or hear my thoughts on, you know, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, I'd love to discuss with you guys, of course. And, uh, yeah, so the, the 100, first season, very, very good show. It's definitely one I'm going to be uh, make, making sure to catch up on. Like I said, I have a way to watch season two right now. I'll be getting into that once I finish The Vampire Diary season six. And so I'll sort of, like, mix in, like, the 100 season two and the original season two together. But Vampire Diary season six next. 100 in the originals after that, then I should be all caught up on the shows I need to see. But yeah, I'll continue to up update you guys on that. And yeah, 100, a very good show. I really enjoy it. And once I catch up, 
that will definitely be in time for season three next year and i will be doing weekly reviews when the time does come hope you guys enjoyed this video again if there's something i missed feel free to leave a comment below would love to discuss it with you guys add me on facebook follow me on movie pilot twitter and look for me on spoil the dead catch you guys next time and uh peace yeah and uh as much as i love the walking dead i i'm actually enjoying shows like the vampire diaries and the hundred and the strain and penny dreadful more than that nowadays but we can talk about that another time have a good day